Oh, hi everyone. Redo Outdoors here. So in this, uh, earlier this year, in February, much of the nation saw power outages across the board due to inclement weather and winter storms. Um, my area included over here in Oregon was also, some places were out of power from anywhere from two days all the way up to a couple weeks. So we were definitely struck with power outages over here as well. Um, much of the items that I had um, in preparations of that worked out very well, but I didn't have it all in one place. So it gave me the idea that I should have a kit that's gonna be specific for when the power goes out. I can just go to that kit and know that everything I need is gonna be inside. So I did develop this kit through, unfortunately, experience. It was a learning opportunity, but it is through experience and I wanna help you guys and everybody else out there to be more prepared for this upcoming winter and making sure that your preparations are squared away and that you can develop a kit like this targeted towards your area in case we see inclement weather again. All right, so I'm gonna dive right into the, the case. This is an MTM case. Uh, I really like this because it has latches on the side and then it's actually O-ring sealed. So if for some reason some moisture does get to it, it's gonna help keep everything inside safe. So let's just dive right in. So sitting right on top, I've got a headlamp. Um, I've always got my EDC flashlight on me. Even when I'm working around the house, I have a flashlight on me. But having this headlamp sitting right on top so I can get to the other contents in the kit is really important because I may not be the one getting in the kit. It could be my spouse, it could be your spouse. Whoever's getting in the kit needs to be able to have uh, accessibility to light right away. So I've got this headlamp, I've got just got a cheaper Energizer headlamp as well. Both of these have um, the red setting as well. So if you're not trying to you know, flood light everywhere, you've got those and you're not gonna kill your night vision. But this other one is a black diamond with the battery pack. So the, the batteries last a really long time and this one is extremely bright. Uh, in a power outage situation, light is very important. So having these lanterns spread throughout, whether you have it in the bathroom or in the kitchen or anywhere else where you need that kind of lighting is gonna be really helpful. Back when we had the storm in February, one of the difficult things was just going to the bathroom, you know, having to take your headlamp or your flashlight or having these spread throughout the house, which we did, was super helpful. So having these, these are cheap, like we got a two pack, it was like 15 bucks on Amazon, um, super cheap, battery powered, they work really well. If you're maybe struggling with a little bit of space, you could also go to these, um, these collapsible, you just blow them up and inflate them, solar powered, um, chargers nope solar powered lights so these are great too they're just uh you know collapsible so if you're working with smaller space it helps out with that in conjunction with the lanterns i do have this olight warrior mini 2 in the pack um this is an extremely bright flashlight i believe the highest lumens is 15 uh 1500 uh, i do have the charging cable uh with the other cables in the kit but this is just an extremely bright flashlight. I love Olight, they make great products. I always have my EDC flashlight on me, even working around the house, but just having this again, cause it may not be me getting in this kit. So having just a regular flashlight that somebody can throw in their pocket is gonna be important. And if all else fails, you've got glow sticks. So I've got a variety of colors of glow sticks here. Um, Glow sticks are great because one of these will light up a small bathroom and you know, you hang it by a string or put it on the counter and it lasts almost 24 hours and you don't need to use battery, you just use a glow stick. But also, if you've got little kids or you know even adults, frankly, um, these little bracelet glow in the dark sticks are a lot of fun. You know, they, they illuminate, they can kind of brighten the mood, bright colors and whatnot. So these can just be fun if you've got kids in the house. Also, these are Night Eyes LED glow sticks. These work really well with pets. Uh, when Rav and I go camping, I will actually attach one of these to his collar. So while he's running around in the bush, I know exactly where he is. Um, but again, with kids and the dark, they're just fun to play with. 
having batteries to go with all those headlamps and whatnot, extra batteries are also gonna be really important because again, you don't know how long you're gonna be out, out of power. Uh, maybe you have cell service, maybe you don't have cell service. Charging your phone and keeping your phone uh, charged as much as possible is also gonna be very important, whether it's you know documentation, taking pictures, or you know, I mean, maybe playing a movie you have downloaded for your kids or whatnot on your phone. Being able to just have your phone charged and then be able to check when service comes back, it's gonna be important. So having power banks, you know, these portable chargers are gonna be really important. These two have uh, the charging cables. Make sure you have them set for your phone, your spouse's phone, whoever else is in the household. But these are really important and uh, they can charge your phones, you know, usually one and a half, one and a quarter times. You know, the anchor ones work really well. Goal Zero, they work great. I usually have all of those in my camping equipment. Um, and then also having a solar charger. Now you may say, I mean, if it's a snowstorm, you know, you're not gonna have uh, the sun out. Well, that's not that's not the case at all. Um, back in February, I actually used this to charge not just my cell phone, but my lanterns as well. So having a solar panel, again, this is just a small one, you can get bigger ones, but having a solar panel like this, so you're not having to utilize uh, the extent of all of your resources can be really helpful and really important. Being able to connect to the outside world is going to help bring comfort and then also awareness of what's going on. So having one of these just cheap crank uh, radios, you know, it's got emergency stations already plugged in there. You know, it's got a, it's got a flashlight. Uh, you can actually charge your phone with it. It has a solar panel on top, but it is also just a crank. Um, you know, dial into weather stations, see what's going on. And in worst case scenario, if they are sending help or sending supplies, you can use this and actually figure out where those supplies are being sent and what's going on. Another great way to reach out for help, is gonna be something like a whistle. So I've got two whistles in this pack. Um, these are gonna be great if, again, worst case scenario, maybe uh, you're stuck in your home, your attic, or um, the wind is blowing very loud and you just need to cut through all the noise and reach help. Having a whistle to really amplify your audio is gonna be very important. Whether you've been screaming for hours and now you've lost your voice, or you just start out with a whistle, these are gonna help and they saved a lot of lives. So make sure you throw a few of these whistles in your kit. I also have some beanies, again, just be cozier, keep uh, keep your heads warm, and some gloves. Now these gloves aren't necessarily targeted towards keep your hands warm because you should already have that stuff accessible, but having some simple work gloves that are clean and dry in case you do need to go outside and uh, whether it's check on the progress of warming up your vehicle or maybe the power went out because of a, a branch falling and you need to go check it out, make sure it's not on your house or what have you, having a pair of work gloves, dry, warm work gloves is also gonna be very important. And in conjunction with the work gloves, hand warmers, again, even if you're just sitting on the couch and your feet are cold, you know, crack a couple of these open, put them in your socks. It's going to help people feel much more comfortable. And you can buy a pack of these for like 10 bucks. So these are very cheap and uh, extremely reliable. Moving on with that, in a worst case scenario, using something like this Life Bivy. This is a, a bivy made out of mylar, so it reflects heat back about 98% or whatnot. Um, next to the kit, I do have blankets set aside, um, wool blankets, sleeping bags, and whatnot, but this is just inside the kit. In case, worst case scenario, I really have to bring up somebody's core temperature. I can put them in this, put blankets on top, warmers and whatnot, and really bring up that core temperature. Um, so having an escape bivy or uh, this life bivy with a whistle attached, you know, could save somebody's life. If you've got a barbecue or alternative cooking sources or even a fireplace, you're gonna wanna have access to flame, right? So Vaseline soaked cotton balls, a bunch of matches, a ferro rod, a lighter, and just a couple other quick tinder tabs and that kind of stuff are in there. You know, having a lighter that's not been used setting aside or setting in the kit um, is gonna be 
great. That way you don't have to worry about, you know, is there fuel in this lighter? Oh, where's my, where's that lighter? You're looking around the place, you know for sure this lighter is in the kit and you don't have to worry about it being um, empty. And last but not least, playing cards and Jenga. I love Jenga. Uh, this is a little mini set, which is exciting. But whether you've got low light conditions or you've got all the light you need, um, playing a game like Jenga is great even for adults. It can pass the time. Um, it's you know mentally stimulating and it's just fun. You know you can play it with kids, adults, and whatnot. Of course, with cards, you know you can play poker or you can play uh, Go Fish or whatever card games you want to play. Just keep your brain occupied, keep morale up. The last thing you want to do is the power goes out and now you're trying to find your game for Uno, you know, and you're, you're trying to locate, but you're missing cards. If you got a deck of cards in here, it's guaranteed to be here. It's entertaining. You know, you don't have to worry about trying to find anything else. So um, that's what's inside the actual kit. Now let's go on to some other preparations and some other things to think about outside of what's just in the kit. Another important item to keep in the house would be um, a boo-boo kit or a trauma kit. So this is just my girlfriend's at home uh, med kit. You know, it's got some of the sim simple, like essential everyday things needed. So, you know, you've got your, I mean, Woody and Forky uh, band-aids in here, uh, Sam splint, you know, Benadryl cream, tweezers, tape, some gauze, uh, burn pads. You know, you've got some of your basic items that every home should have. If you guys want me to go more in depth on the at home uh, kit, just let me know. But also in conjunction with that, you know, do have trauma gear around. This is a trauma kit, so this has tourniquet, you know, gloves, um, quick clock gauze, all those kinds of items. So have a kit that's really targeted towards trauma and then also just your everyday boo-boos because it's not always going to be a gunshot wound or, you know, a stab wound or something. Sometimes it's just going to be a kid falls, scrapes his leg and or slips on the ice and bonks their elbow and whatnot. And now you just got to treat that. So it's not always the end of the world scenario, but having just a simple med kit set aside for the home situation is going to be very vital. Something else that's going to be very important is having food that's easy to prepare on hand. So whether you boil a little bit of water and have some oatmeal or maybe you've got some canned jarred soup set aside, good soup. Um, this is going to be super easy to make. You can put it in the back of your closet and forget about it for a while. But it's nutritious. It's pre-made. It's very easy to cook. Uh, use a butane stove. You can have this thing boiling in five minutes. Um, if you are going to start looking at more longevity sake, you could look at freeze dried food. This is the Mountain House 24 serving container. Um, you can stack these. Uh, they're, they're decently priced. You can usually get them on sale on Black Friday and things like that. Or you can just buy an individual pack one at a time. If you don't want to drop the cash for one of these, I think these are going to run you about a hundred bucks or something. Just every time you go into a, a store, um, just pick up one bag, one bag here, one bag there. Next grocery order, you pick up two bags. Wherever you can, you can just start building up your supply and pretty soon you've got more than what's in this container. So once you've exhausted your more fresh resources, you could always go to the mountain house because again you don't know if the power is going to be out for two hours two days or two weeks so having food that's geared towards a different time frame is going to be really important so you're also going to need alternative cooking sources uh back when we had the ice storm earlier this year uh, one of the biggest things was also being able to cook food and you know heat food prepare food things like that so having something like the small butane um, little cooktop, again, this is really small, minimalistic. Um, if you're in an apartment or a smaller home, something like this is gonna be perfect. You can buy these little butane uh, canisters and store them you know, aside in a safe environment, of course. Something like this is gonna be great. It's just a single burner stove, so if you're boiling some water, cooking some soup, good soup. Um, it'll be super simple for that. You can also get into those Coleman stoves, which I have, I keep in my truck at all times for camping. Um, these Coleman propane tanks canisters are very essential. I have many of these stored aside. You can use them not only for the stove top, but you can also use them for 
a heat source. So you can screw this on and uh, use the propane to heat up a small room, uh, of course, with appropriate ventilation and whatnot. Uh, but if the power is out and things are getting in a dire situation, have some ventilation, but you can actually be heating up some space using this implement as well. So kind of two birds with one stone with this one. So something else that's gonna be really important to set aside would be some water. As much water as you can set aside, I would recommend. Whether you live in an apartment, you live in a small house or what have you, having some water set aside is gonna be really important. The people recommend you have one gallon per person per day, but that's gonna include drinking, hygiene, and a little bit of cooking. So you really wanna go above and beyond that in your preps, but you know, depending on where you live, if you live in a, an apartment, you know, do what you can. These Coleman containers are great. I use this one for camping all the time. I do have other means to store water. I have my water categorized as clean drinking water and then also just sanitary or, you know, it's also clean. It's just, it's more used for sanitation, washing, cooking, that kind of stuff. So I do have them separated, but uh, water is gonna be really important because again, you don't know if it's gonna be two hours, two days or two weeks without power. So if you're able to afford and store a generator, that would be a great option. You know, you can go um, lithium ion or gas, um, but you know, if you're in an apartment or a small home, or maybe you just can't afford that, another great option would be something like this Jackery Explorer 300. This thing is great, charging your cell phones, you know, stereos if you're trying to play some music, or I even used it to power my small uh, smoothie maker. You know, gotta have a smoothie. So this is great for doing all those small tasks as well. You know, you've got your, your 110, you know, 12 volt, and your USB. Uh, so this is gonna cover a lot of those things that a regular generator would, um, just maybe for a shorter amount of time. You can get these battery packs in a lot bigger, you know, that would be able to charge things like refrigerators and that kind of stuff. But just for your everyday items, something like this Jackery 300 is gonna be great with that. Just make sure you do have your phone cables for everybody's phone in the house and then any other cables you may need. In the worst case scenario, if the power goes out and something happens to have a discharge and uh, cause a fire, make sure you do have fire extinguishers everywhere in your house. I have some in the bathrooms, bedrooms, and also in the kitchen and of course the garage. Um, these are super, super cheap, easy to buy. You can get a size like this for 15 bucks, you know, at the, the grocery store. So I would just go pick up a few, spread them throughout the house. And then that way, wherever you are, you don't have to go searching for one of these. Make sure also if you have you know, your spouse or other relatives in the house, they also know where these are because you may not be home when this happens. Having some tools on hand is going to be really important also. Uh, when the power goes out, you know, you may have plumbing issues. So having one of these um, water shutoff tools is going to be very important. I remember when I moved into my first house, I uh, accidentally flooded the kitchen and having one of these would have been great to run out to the street and turn the water off. So if a pipe bursts due to freezing temperatures or what have you, having a way to shut the water off at the street is going to be very important. That being said, if you know of a storm coming beforehand, make sure you unplug any anything in the sockets that you don't need to have plugged in, and you're really gonna mitigate that shock and potential for um, fire. So something that we were not expecting during that ice storm was to lose complete uh, service in our cell phones. Uh, we couldn't make calls, we couldn't you know, go on the internet, why not, to see what was going on. Even though my family lived uh, only a couple miles away, I had no idea whether they were doing well, if I, you know, they didn't know if we were doing well. So planning to have your cell service taken out is going to also be very important because that could happen. The, the ice was so bad that even walking out to your car um, was very difficult because everything was frozen shut. It was a, um, basically an ice skating rink outside and doing any task, whether you were trying to last minute stock up on supplies, go get gas in your vehicle or anything like that, it was extremely difficult. It was just too dangerous to even leave the house. So having these things set aside, you know, fuel in your tank, the food already set aside, water set aside, is gonna be really important because in these scenarios, you don't wanna be leaving your house. 
you want to hunker down stay safe stay warm in most cases uh you can if you follow the weather you know when the inclement weather is coming and you can prepare for it so things like making sure all of your vehicles have gas in them and are in good running condition with tire pressure um, if you anticipate losing power or whatnot filling up your bathtubs with water uh, even warm water hot water just regular water it's, it's going to give you a lot of gallons to work with in the worst case scenario also making sure all of your devices are charged uh, your cell phones again Bluetooth speakers or whatnot, whatever, you, whatever you've got and you think you're gonna need, make sure they're all charged up. Make sure you and every family member in your home knows exactly where this kit is and make sure you go through it beforehand to make sure you didn't go through and pick out that one item that you thought you needed two months ago and forgot to put back. Go through the pack or go through the kit, make sure you've got everything you need. Make sure you make a plan with your family uh, all family members, adults, children, and your pets included. Make sure they're inside, where it's safe, all food and water is topped off for them as well. Uh, and make sure you just have a plan of action. If, if your spouse is at the grocery store or maybe at work when it happens, make sure they have a plan to get home. Make sure you have a plan if you can't communicate with them. Is there a meeting spot? Are you gonna stay at home? Are you gonna get the kids? Are they gonna get their kids? Who's gonna you know, feed Tommy the dog? We don't know. So make sure you create a plan, communicate it with everyone in your household and even extended families. Having uh, flashlights, lanterns placed throughout the house is also gonna be re really helpful. You know, Maybe you're going through your sock drawer when the power goes out and now you gotta stumble all the way to find your kit when if you had just a lantern or maybe a flashlight in there, you could grab that and that could get you to your uh, your kit a lot faster. Make sure your smoke detectors are working and your carbon monoxide are working as well. If you do have to go to alternative cooking sources or heating sources, you wanna make sure those carbon monoxide detectors are working efficiently. Make sure you check your piping and that there's no cracks or seams or anything like that when the weather starts getting colder. Okay, everyone, if you like this type of content and you wanna see more, let me know down in the comments below. Let me know if I miss anything, if I should add anything, or if you have any other feedback. But until next time, make sure you ignite that like button for me, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Ugh. Guys, if you like this type of content, let me know down below. Make sure you, oh man. Alright. <laughs> He's burped. Alright. Three, two, something else is gonna <laughs> vital. Uh, this thing is great. Use it to charge your phone. Obviously I mean I use it to do yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna start a new one. You're so cute.